let us have a look at the prescribed case of Erasmus versus Africander. So the facts of the Erasmus case are as follows. Erasmus, as a co-owner of mineral rights in respect of coal, applied for an interdict to restrain the other co-owners, which, which are the respondents, from commencing with and carrying on mining operations for coal on the Brackfontein farm. The applicant, Erasmus, held an undivided 1 over 520th share in the mineral rights in respect of the Brackfontein farm, whereas the respondent, held an undivided share of 519 over 520 in the mineral rights in the coal. The respondent was planning on exploiting the minerals on, that, on the farm, even though the applicant did not want this or refused to consent to this. The applicant argued that as long as it is the holder of undivided 1 over 520th share in the mineral rights, the respondent may not take any steps whatsoever for the exploitation of the coal right on the farm, unless it acquires consent from the applicant to do so. And the applicant submitted that such exploitation will result in him suffering irreparable harm, since the respondent will be mining and removing coal from property in respect of which he is a holder of an undivided share. In other words, no coal mining operations could be carried out by any one of them unless they both agree, for any such operations would inevitably constitute an infringement of the rights of the others. The mining or removal of a single cobble of coal by the respondent from the property, so the argument went, would amount to a misappropriation of the applicant's property because the applicant had a 1 over 520th undivided share in every cobble of coal mined at Brackfontein. Thus, the applicant relied on the interdict to prevent interference with his rights. Now, let's have a look at what the court said about this argument of the applicant. The court set out the requirements for an interdict. First of all, a clear right must be established. Second of all, injury actually committed or reasonably apprehended must be shown. And in third place, absence of similar protection by another ordinary remedy must also be showed. So the court must be satisfied that all three of these requirements can be met before the court will order an interdict. In terms of the requisite that requires the applicant to prove a clear right, the court held that it is common cause that the applicant is still the registered holder of a 1 over 520th undivided share in the mineral rights and has a clear real right in the property Brackfontein. The title to mineral rights confers real rights upon the holder thereof. Therefore, the applicant uh, sa uh, satisfied the requirement of establishing a clear right. In terms of the second requirement, namely whether a reasonable apprehension of an infringement of his mineral rights took place or will take place, the applicant's argument was as follows. As long as he is the registered holder of a 1 over 520th undivided share in the mineral rights in respect of Brackfontein, the respondent cannot without his consent embark upon any mining operations on the farm, because this would inevitably constitute an infringement of his rights, no matter how relatively insignificant those rights may appear to be. The applicant argued that he virtually had the right to veto any attempt by the respondent to exploit its coal rights on Brackfontein. On the other hand, the respondent's contention was that it was fully entitled to mine its proportionate share of the coal deposits on Brackfontein, whether or not the applicant agreed. By embarking on the proposed mining operation, so it was argued, the respondent would simply be utilizing its rights for the very purpose for which they were granted. Now, based on the precedent the court considered, it came to a conclusion that the rigid approach argued for the, by the applicant is not correct. The court held that what must be considered is whether the use of the property is reasonable before it can be said that the use of property by one of the co-owners results in infringing of the other co-owner's share in the property, meaning 
the second requirement of the interdict will be complied with if there is unreasonable use. So the crucial issue was whether the applicant has established that his rights as, as the holder of a 1 over 520th undivided share of the mineral rights in respect of Brockfontein would be affected detrimentally by the, by the coal mining operations which the respondent had in mind, which would mean the use of the respondent is unreasonable. The court held that in view of the general principles governing the relationship of co-owners of undivided shares in immovable property and movable property regarding reasonable use, which is proportionate use for the intended purpose, the court was of the opinion that a co-owner holding an undivided share in mineral rights should not be restrained from exercising his rights on the mere ground that a co-owner has not consented or given their authority thereto. Something more than this is required, namely that the like rights of the other co-owners are being or are likely to be adversely affected by the use of it or exercise of the other co-owners rights. In this regard, the court held that the effect or the probable effect of the exercise of the rights should be considered to determine if such exercise infringes on the rights of other co-owners. This means that the test for determining infringement of fellow co-owners' um, rights is a question assessed on the facts of the case. So this is a contextual question. Based on the court's assessment of the fa facts in front of it, in particular, the evidence brought that showed that the respondent was not planning on mining more than its pro rata share of the coal deposits, the court concluded that the respondent had the right to mine its proportionate share of the Brockfontein coal deposits, provided it can do so without prejudice to the rights of the applicant. Since the applicant has not alleged that the respondent intends mining more than its proportionate share of the coal, or that he has any grounds for fearing that this will happen, in fact, there is no evidence that the respondent has any such intention and therefore no infringement of the applicant's share in the property would occur. If the respondent were to commence its coal mining activities, it would simply be exercising a right which it undoubtedly has. Therefore, the second requirement for the interdict was not satisfied by the applicant, meaning the court found that where a co-owner uses um, the co-owned property proportionate to their, to their share, no consent from our other co-owner is required for that use. Um, only when use goes above the proportionate share that they have in the property would consent be required. The court also held that since the applicant could approach the court for damage claim in delict, the applicant could not show that the interdict was the only remedy available to it, meaning requirement three for the interdict was also not met. Interestingly, the court also made an obiter statement, which specifically tells us more about the um, co-owner's obligations regarding maintenance and expenses, as well as profits made from property. The court held that the applicant would have the right to call upon the respondent to account for its mining operations and he would also be entitled to claim his pro rata share of the coal actually mined against tender of his proportionate share of the mining costs or alternatively the reasonable value of his share of that coal making due allowance for the mining costs. So when we get to or when we look at the obligation of co-owners to contribute proportionate to their undivided co-ownership share, to the maintenance and also to the costs involved with the property. Um, we will refer back to what the court said here in the um, Africanda case. So basically the Erasmus versus Africanda case is authority for what would constitute unreasonable use and what would not constitute unreasonable use. Um, please make sure that you read the case and follow the court's ratio so that if you do get a question similar to this one, you know how to approach it.